Okay. Uh, thanks everyone for joining. Uh, this is Venkat, Venkat from uh, Visa Service in Mexico. Uh, we have been providing this service from past four years. Uh, also have <coughs> my partner Ernesto as well, uh, who lives from uh, <coughs> Brownsville, uh, Matamoros location. Um, we provided client. I mean, <coughs> we provide service for almost twelve thousand plus clients until now from past four years. That includes a lot of uh, students. Um, H1B, H4 visa holders, C3, E3D, uh, Australian citizens, uh, also the TN visa holders who needs to renew their visas and all that stuff, right? So, and also different people from different countries. Uh, that includes uh, in a, a lot of folks from India as well as China, uh, Uganda, Nepal, Bangladeshi students, and all these different different countries. So the reason for this particular session is uh, how to provide you the information about how to fast forward the EAD uh, approval process um, instead of you know waiting for the USCIS. As you all know that, uh, let's say if H1B wants to renew, uh, not exactly renew, let's extend their um, visa status, right? So they apply with the USCIS through premium processing, that option is there for H1B, but Unfortunately for H4, that option is not really there. So they simply apply as a, along with the H1B petition itself as for their extensions. And the same applies for E3D as well, also uh, L2 as well. Um, if the, um, either it will be like an individual application that you send for H4 and H4 EAD or you send that application together to USCIS along with the H-1B application as a premium processing. But I believe they do, they're not doing the premium processing uh, for H-4 and H-4 EAD, even though you submit that along with that application uh, with the H-1B. I think they'll just separate it out and they, they do approve on their own pace, the USCIS, right? It might vary from uh, four to, uh, I think uh, 12, 12 months, four months to 12 months or 14 months or 16 months. So you guys should know the timeline better because in case if you have applied for any H4 extensions, right? So there are two options to, let's say if your H4 is taking time, obviously uh, your H4 EAD renewal, that will also take some time, right? So in, in cases like, <clears throat> Let's say if uh, spouse related H1B got extended, then uh, you can simply um, attend visa interview and then extend your H4 status or similarly, you can extend your, um, EA, I mean, fast forward your EAD process by submitting that visa copy or something like that. So recently USCS has released a, a new rule saying that if you are able to extend your I I-94, that will automatically extend your H4 EAD. Um, so for that information, all you can do is you can simply, let's say there are two different scenarios. The scenario A is like this. If you if you have your, I have explained that over in this uh, page, I'll send this link uh, as well. If you have already H4 visa stamped in your passport, which is about to expire something around like next two months or three months or even like next one week, and you still have your, or you still have your I-94, which is valid until next week or next 10 days or next one or two months or even six months away from now. What you can do is, let's see if you already have a H-4 stamped in your passport, uh, you can simply come to uh, one of these border, US-Mexico border locations, cross it and come back and ask for a new I-94, provided if your spouse related I-797 got extended to premium, premium petition. Let's say my H-4 visa is about to expire next month or my I-94, H-4 related I-94 is about to expire next month. Whereas my spouse related H-1B I-797 got extended until 2025 through premium processing. So uh, I can simply come to US-Mexico border council, um, I mean US-Mexico border location, CBP locations and uh, cross the border and come back. Uh, crossing the border is nothing but uh, no, not a big thing. It's easy. I uh, will guide you about how to do that step-by-step -step process. You can do this at either US-Mexico border or, or also as Canada border. So I'll, I'll tell the differences between doing it at Mexico border, border locations as well as uh, um, Canada border locations, what you need and what you don't need and all that. 
So all you need is your primary candidates uh, H1 B related I797 details. The same applies for E3 candidates as well. So E3D needs uh, E3 related um, I797 extension. Uh, so the same thing with L2 candidates needs uh, uh, L1 related uh, extended details, right? So what need, uh, so you'll simply cross the border and come back to the CBP office, ask for the I-94 renewal based on your spouse H1, uh, spouse extended petition, and you renew your I-94, send that copy to USCIS and fast forward your H4 EAD or L2 EAD or E3D uh, related EAD. I don't know, E3D has uh, that EAD process or not, but uh, for H4 and L2, for sure I know. So you can extra, you can fast forward your EAD um, process by next two, two to three months, you'll be able to get it. Instead of uh, H4 taking a lot of time, like from four to six months or uh, 12 months, something like that. You, you'll, you're reducing the timeline by simply doing this I-94 renewal at these uh, border uh, locations. Also, you can fly out from US to Mexico as well, or US to Canada and then fly back in. All you need to do is just simply exit the country and <coughs> do an entry to the country. So, and your I-94 will be renewed until your new um, petition approval uh, details of your spouse. So that's how it is, right? So scenario A explains that. So where it says your spouse I-797 extension petition needs to be approved uh, through premium processing and H4 is taking a lot of time by UCS. You simply come to the border and then I extend it. So if you want to do this at Laredo, Texas border or uh, Brownsville, Texas border, then we can guide you with the step-by-step -step process about how to do that. We'll share the photos and all that stuff, how to cross the border, how to come back. And also, especially the phone call support for any questions that you have. Uh, so yeah, we can provide you that as a service. And recently we had one client, uh, her name is Aritha, and uh, this is her case. Uh, she did the H4 I-94 related renewal at Laredo, Texas border. So she, uh, her H4 stamping in the passport is expired and, but she already has that H4 uh, visa that is still, I mean, I-94 is still valid. So she was able to just go to the CBP office and then extended her uh, I-94 and using that to uh, auto extend her H-48. So this is the case with scenario A where you have valid H-4 stamping or expired H-4 visa, but with valid I-94. There is scenario B where your I-94 is expired as well as your H-4 visa is expired. What do you need to do in that case? The only option left for that specific case is where you need to request for the emergency appointment and get it stamped. And while coming back, you'll, your I-94 will be extended. So use that uh, <coughs> extended I-94 as well as the stamp to fast forward or uh, move the H-4, I mean, the EAD process to be uh, approved sooner based on that. So you, you can take a look at the scenario B he explained here. Uh, let me see. So these are our recent clients who got the emergency appointments in New Orleans as well as Monterey locations. Most of these folks are uh, H4 and H4 and uh, H1B and H4 families. The reason that they used is pretty, I mean, uh, I have uh, include those details here. Client contacted, contacted us on January 7th. Uh, they were able to draft the emergency reason saying like they listed that as below. Uh, requesting emergency appointment based on uh, working for healthcare, supporting frontline workers, and also possibility of job loss or financial loss due to lack of H-4 visa beyond a particular date. Because USCC is taking a lot of time to extend H-4, and that is delaying your H-4 EAD, and uh, that will result in your you know uh, job loss or financial loss. So you can follow similar format to request the emergency appointment for uh, H-4 visa. Also, if your spouse is working for any healthcare or anything, then it's like, you know, you're adding two more additional uh, reasons, right? Instead of your, uh, along with your H4 related uh, EAD and this job loss, you're adding your spouse related healthcare as well as to give a better support for this emergency appointment reason, right? So if not, then you can simply add your reason to that and then request the emergency appointment. 
and uh, a lot of people i think february we have close to um, 20 to 30 members who are attending uh, for this emergency appointment you can follow similar format to write the emergency appointment reason okay so yeah that is information also there will be a lot of frequently asked questions about hey my spouse uh, doesn't have h1 uh, my spouse doesn't have uh, the H1B visa stamped in the passport. Can can he or she accompany me? Yes. In few cases, <coughs> the CBP officers have asked the primary candidate to be there as well. In some cases, they didn't. Let's say in some cases, if they ask the primary candidate to be there, so it's always better to um, travel along with your spouse in case if you can, especially if you're going to these land borders, right? So. Second thing, let's say if they don't ask, then you simply go there and then renew your I-94 and come back and extend your uh, H-4 EAD. That's how it works. In, um, and I have listed the most frequently asked questions about uh, that here. So whether your spouse needs to accompany or not, also how much time it takes for all altogether for this entire process. Do you need any uh, appointment or not, you don't need any appointment to go to the CBP office. You can go at any time. Uh, borders are open 24 hours, 65 days. Also, do you need any COVID test to enter into Mexico and come back by land? You don't need any COVID test while you're going uh, for this process. Also, do you need any Mexican visa? No, you don't need any Mexican visa if you just cross the land uh, and come back, cross the border and by land and come back. Um, also, uh, how to reach Laredo? I mean, I have explained the process about uh, how to do this at Laredo, Texas. We can help you at Brownsville, Texas as well. Uh, we have our team over there. So they can guide you with the process and all that. All you'll be doing is you simply get down at one of these uh, airports and then take an Uber to the International Bridge, cross it and come back to the CBP office and ask them for the I-94 renewal. So totally how much time it takes for this entire process. Uh, it shouldn't take much more than uh, two to three hours after you reach uh, Laredo, Texas. Uh, in some cases, the CBP offices, they might, I mean, few people, few CBP offices, they know very, they are very, very well versed about that entire process about I-94 renewal for different, different cases. In few uh, cases, they don't, I mean, you know, CBP office, they keep on changing the shifts. So some CBP offices might not very well know the information. So in that case, try to request their supervisors to uh, handle your case. Um, uh, you need to be in a situation to explain. Let's say if you already have your I-94 still valid, and if they ask you, you still have I-94 valid, why you're coming for the I-94 renewal? You need to be in a situation to explain the reason why you're going there for the I-94 renewal, saying the H-4, uh, extension is taking time by USCIS and you came to renew your I-94 based on your spouse uh, related uh, petition. So you can, uh, uh, I mean, you know, fast forward the process of the H-4 EAD so you can continue work without any job loss and all that you need to be in a situation to explain that to the CBP officer. So they, they can help you with the I-94 renewal, right? So also, is it safe process to do this? Is there any chance for the CBP offices not to allow me uh, into USA. Yes, it's totally safe process. Two things will happen, right? Either they will renew your I-94 and let you inside, or they simply don't renew your, your I-94 and they can still let you in because you still have that valid I-94 or uh, still have the valid visa or expired visa with valid I-94. So they, they can definitely let you in without any uh, sending you back to home country or something. So there are a lot of frequently asked questions about whether I'll be get departed, um, I mean, uh, deported or something from the border in case if they don't renew my I-94. They never did, they never deported anyone. Um, almost we supported close to 30 to 40 members from past one month. So none of them has been, have been uh, deported or uh, from, from there. Either they say that they will renew the I-94 or simply they say that they don't renew the I-94, that's all they'll do. But until now, in few cases, few CBP officers, they have involved a little bit more conversation uh, about uh, to know why they're trying to do the I-94 renewal and all that, but eventually they did. 
so uh, we can share you a letter as well that can you know explain about uh, this i94 renewal at these borders so you can just show that to the cbp officers about that also there is one more process called automatic revalidation so let's say if you want to fly out from uh, us to mexico um, to do this i94 renewal you must need either canadian visitor visa or japan or schengen or valid us visa if not then mexican visa to fly out to mexico while coming back you will be using automatic revalidation rule to enter inside to enter enter into usa there you will be using automatic revalidation rule in the case uh, where if you don't have uh, any of the visitor visa then you can't they don't i mean mexican immigration don't really let you inside uh, uh, let you land in mexico and enter into mexico even if you have valid us visa they can let you in but uh, if you want to do the sign in for renewal by flying uh, they seem, i mean you must need some sort of visitor visa or at least valid us visa to fly into mexico while coming back you're going to use that automatic revalidation rule so let me explain briefly about how automatic revalidation rule uh, up, um, helps automatic revalidation rule is something let's say if i am in united states with my expired us visa it doesn't matter f1 or any valid us visa h1 or h4 but i have a valid i797 with i94 attached to it i've been living in united states with i94 and um, uh, i797 with i94 i can fly fly or go by land to mexico no no i mean i, I can go to mexico or canada and come back within 30 days uh, without the need of us visa stamping right it will be useful while coming back to usa but make sure that you have some sort of visa to fly into mexico or to fly into canada make sure make a note of that point if you have a still valid us visa you'll be able to fly to mexico without the need of mexican visa but if you want to do this with the canada you must need some sort of i mean you must need canadian visitor visa so think of going i mean while always going to a specific country always try to make sure that you have that specific uh, country's visitor visa especially to canada right so canada doesn't if you have a valid us visa canada doesn't really allow you with a valid us visa to fly into canada but mexico allows you and but while coming back you're going to use that automatic revalidation tool so while going by land uh, you go, i mean pretty much you using the same automatic revalidation rule uh, while you have that uh, i94 still valid you just doing that and renew your i94 so these are the two different scenarios where scenario a that you have the valid h4 uh, visa stamping in your passport or h4 related uh, i94 which is still valid second this scenario where you have both of them expired us visa is expired i94 expired you just simply attend the visa interview get the visa stamped and you send the visa copy to uscs to extend your uh, i mean the fast forward the h4 ead process so that's how uh, so that those are the two different scenarios that i just want to explain so okay i'll go ahead and take the questions let me see the chat If anyone of you have any questions, you can yeah message in the chat, please. Can we also extend I ninety four for H four at T on a border? Yes, you can do that. You can do this at either San Diego, California, or T on a border, or Laredo, Texas border, or Nogales border also. The other one is the uh, Brownsville, Texas, and Matamoros border. Mahesh, do you know what happens to existing H-4 and EAD applications which are filed with USCIS once I-94 is updated border? So that doesn't have any impact. What you're doing is you're just doing the I-94 renewal and then submitting that I-94 as a supporting document or simply doing as interfiling. That's what I heard from others. You're simply sending that updated I-94 as a supporting document for your I-94, uh, I mean, for your H-4 EAD. Um, processing to be faster so that's what uh, i heard from others mm, also there is one more question from uh, shravan uh, i'm approved for i797b also um, 
I think yeah, pretty much these, this is the information that I want to share. And for the questions, <clears throat> I'll go ahead and uh, stop the recording or because I, I get, I'm getting a lot of questions regarding visa stamping in Mexico. I'm going to take that session again. Uh, for now, I'll just stop the recording.